Hey out there in YouTube land, uh, I just wanted to tell you I've had a, uh, I had two uh, Lenovo C540s that suddenly got the uh, the infamous click of death. That is when you uh, when you try to power them on, there's just a faint click 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 sound that comes out of the speaker, uh, and the machine does nothing else. Oddly enough, I had two of these machines. Um, one belonged to uh, my younger boy, the other to my older boy, and they both failed within about a week of each other. So it was really strange. Um, and coincidentally, they both failed uh, within about maybe. 30 days of the warranty period ending. So that kind of sucked. But um, anyway, I'm not afraid of that kind of stuff. I avoid warranties for fun. Uh, so um, I, uh, I cracked open the case here and I tried to see what I can figure out. And um, this one is now the second one I've done. I've already figured out the problem here on my younger boy's computer. And I'm going to tell you guys what I did. So basically the first thing I did is I pulled the covers off and there are other YouTube videos uh, for that, but the basic procedure is you just use a safe open pry tool here along the bottom edge of the computer uh, to pop the clips. And then once you've popped those clips, you can slide the bottom shell off of the computer. Having slid the bottom shell off the computer, there's some screws along the bottom that were covered by that shell. You just remove those screws and then a little safe open pry tool along the left and right edges um, to pop that up. And once you get those edges popped up, then the whole top cover just hinges off and it leaves the computer looking something like this. There's a um, there's some shielding inside that you need to take off a half a dozen uh, M3 screws and then uh, you end up with uh, the computer looking like this, which you need to diagnose. Now the first thing I did um, is I disconnected all of the peripheral connectors here. Uh, that is the hard drive connectors uh, both the power and the data. This is the hard disk data connector. This is the optical disk data connector. And then this is the SATA data cable. This is another SATA data cable for the optical drive. Um, so I just pulled those off. And as soon as I pulled those off, I plugged the power back in, turned it on, and sure enough, the machine boots up. Instantly came up and complained about not finding a hard drive with an operating system. So that was great news, actually. I was happy to see that the machine was not really badly damaged, there was something blown on the motherboard or something like that. It's something to do with the peripherals. So then I went sleuthing my way through the peripherals, reconnecting things one at a time. And I found out that whenever I had the hard disk power cable connected back to the motherboard, it wouldn't boot and I would get the click of death. And so um, I took the cable off and here's the cable from my other boy's computer. And I noticed that uh, the cable sits like this in here. And I noticed that the on the power side over here on the right side, um, there was some corrosion internally, quite a bit of corrosion actually. And I thought, oh, I bet the corrosion is shorting out the power rails. And that's what's making the whole thing go sideways. So um, I got some cleaner and uh, cleaned it out and, and got in there after the, con after the con uh, corrosion with a toothbrush and all. And that's okay, I can speak really and uh, didn't help, didn't help. So I figured, well, maybe the whatever is shorting this thing um, is happening internally uh, because it, it, the machine does not work when this little power cable is connected to the motherboard. It doesn't matter if the data cable is connected, but if the power cable is connected, um, the machine just gives me the click of death. So I know it has something to do with this cable. So fine, I went looking for another cable on Amazon. They cost a few bucks. They're somewhere between 15 and 25 bucks, depending on you know whose you buy and what they claim to be. Um, but they're on there on Amazon for replacements and that's fine. So if that turns out to be your problem, if you have the click of death, the first thing to do is get into the machine like this and disconnect this hard disk power cable. Um, and while you're at it, disconnect the optical cable. But usually I'm, I'm betting it's the hard disk cable that's going to cause you the problem. Disconnect the hard disk power cable. And if the machine boots and complains, you know, if it boots up in the BIOS and then complains that it can't find the hard drive, that's it. You found, the bad, you found a bad cable and you need to replace the entire hard disk cable assembly. Um, now, when I opened up this machine, I found something slightly different. You can see on this machine where the cable mounts right here is all very clean, no problem. So the, the issue was pretty simple on this machine. It just wouldn't boot when the power cable was connected. It would just give me the click of death. On this machine, I noticed instantly when I pulled the hard drive out, if you look, and I'm sorry, my lighting is not great. Let me pull this 
let me pull my work light around. If you look underneath the hard disk power cable, you can see right here there's some discoloration. There's some smoky discoloration. So that was the first red flag. And I thought, well, okay, you know, let's see what happens. Let's see if we get the same results on the other side. And so just real quickly, I plugged everything in, put power to it, turned the power on, and sure enough, I got a little puff of magic smoke right out of here. And so I instantly, I just pulled the power connector off the machine um, and pulled the screw out. And when I pull the screw out, now you can get a really good view. Uh-oh, that is no bueno. That is just no good. And sure enough, if you look at the bottom side of the connector, that thing is toasted and burning through. You can see that right there. So uh, that pretty much confirms my suspicion. Uh, there's some kind of corrosion. Um, there's something wrong with the way this connector is manufactured. I think is a um, it's a poor choice of materials uh, that's probably causing uh, corrosion between the uh, between the two metals uh, that make a contact surface. And it takes a year or two before that corrosion builds up to the point uh, where the connector just rots out. Uh, and when it rots out, it shorts out and uh, and takes the machine with it. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to take the power supply, at least not in the two machines uh, that I've got. It doesn't seem to do any damage to the motherboard. It just gives us the click of death, and that's a good thing. So out this thing comes. Bye-bye with it. Uh, it's going into the bin. But before I throw it away, uh, we have a repair option. We actually have two repair options. Um, this is just a regular right-angle SATA data cable that connects to the... Um, that connects to the hard drive. You can see they've, they've molded it into a case of their own, but that isn't really necessary. It's just, I, it's just sort of a convenience thing for them. Um, and so uh, what I'm gonna do is you can order, you can order this whole assembly on Amazon, but to be honest with you, because of this problem, I have no confidence myself that the replacement assembly will last any better than this did. Uh, and not have the same problem. I just don't like overbuilt stuff like this. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this power cable off of this assembly and I'm gonna connect this, uh, I'm gonna solder it to a regular SATA power cable and then I'm gonna use a regular SATA data cable and just plug them back into the motherboard and repair the unit that way. Uh, and it's probably gonna cost me about $5 to repair both units instead of buying two, you know, 15 to $25 cables, 30 to $50 um, to, repair the, to repair both units. So based on your skill and your willingness, um, you know, to, to, to do one approach or the other, uh, you can save yourself a little money and probably get a longer lasting repair. If you just make your own cable, just remember to save this power cable end because you want this connector. It's this little connector here is what connects to the motherboard and you want to make sure you save that and keep it. Um, and when you get your SATA, your regular SATA power cable, uh, it's just going to have the same, it's going to have the same colors. You just solder like colors together uh, and then make sure everything's nice and insulated and tight and put it all together no problem. And maybe I'll post a picture of that or a follow-up video of what that repair looks like when I'm done with it. Anyway, that's it. I'm sorry I'm a little wordy here, but um, that, was the whole, that was the whole shebang. That's the whole repair. That fixes the click of death on a Lenovo C540, at least it does for me, on two different units. Um, bad design on Lenovo's part uh, for the connector, but maybe some kudos to them for having a good enough design on the rest of the board. Um, that that short in the power connector uh, did not take the whole motherboard out. So uh, you can't have it both ways. I'm going to call it good. And uh, thank goodness we're able to repair the units and keep them usable. I hope this video helps somebody. Um, if this video is at all helpful or informative to you, uh, please give me a thumbs up. I'm not a big YouTuber, but I would appreciate um, knowing uh, that the video I've put together uh, has helped somebody. I make a video probably about once every three years with a repair tip like this. But uh, but when I find something really interesting, I, I try to make sure I post it and make sure that information is captured out there on the interwebs. All right, thanks very much. Bye.